Hey everybody, Poker Dad here. Um, here for another session review. This is a session review I'm going to be doing of NL25 that I did played at America's Card Room tonight, uh, September 11, 2018. Just want to show you it's been a really really bad month so far. 11 days into the month, um, we're down $234, which uh, if you do the math um, is down almost 10 buy-ins this this month. Uh, I'm actually dangerously close to having to drop to NL10. Um, but you know what, we'll just do what we can do. The problem is at this point I need to commit to a site uh, because I can't have my money split between two sites so it's going to be either ACR or Ignition and I'm leaning towards Ignition because it is soft player pool and um, not as big of a bot issue and all these other things so I think I need to make a decision tonight and commit to one site and uh, you know then at that point just continue to work as hard as we can to succeed. Uh, but until then, uh, I want to do a session review here tonight. Um, so I have here 20 hands. All these hands were um, where the total pot size were 20 big blinds or bigger. So anyway, without further ado, let's jump right into it. As you can see, I have Jack King lawsuit here from this small blind. Um, so I do decide to 3-bet here with the Jack King lawsuit, which is perfectly fine versus opening size from the button. And we do get a call, um, and we get a gut shot here. Um, I do decide to throw out a C bet here out of position because um, we have a gut shot to the nuts here. If a ten comes out, you know we do have the best straight here. Uh, so I definitely want to throw out a C bet here. My, when my opponent raises it to me here, though, definitely we're going to be folding. He raised all in. So the question then becomes, is this really a mistake? Now, when I take a look at this hand now and I think about it, this probably is not the best bet here uh, because our opponent is calling our three bet short stacked. Uh, so we really don't have much room here to bluff going forward if we don't hit the, um, the gut shot on the turn. Uh, so actually, now when I think about this here, it's probably not the best C bet here. So I definitely think this is a mistake. And I'm um, glad this showed up as a first hand to see that this definitely was a mistake. I should not have C bet here. Versus short stack. In fact, you could even make the argument here that pre flop, I shouldn't be three betting, um, three betting a short stack with king jack offsuit. So, really, even this could easily be a fold here, and we save ourselves some money. Here we have ace king suited here from the button. Uh, we get a three big blind open raise from the small blind, uh, for, I mean, from the cutoff. So, we do three bet it here from the button. And get a call and get a pretty nice flop here with uh, three aces. My opponent decides to dunk into us here. So I have two options here. I could either raise him or I can just call. I decided to just call because our hand isn't really very vulnerable at all. Sure, it is vulnerable potentially against um, against the full house or something like that. Uh, but I think overall, I think it's okay for me to... Um, to just call this here and not have to bet. Plus, I do have a backdoor flush draw, worst case as well. Six comes out here, and this time he checks, so now I definitely want to throw out a bet here. I throw out a half pot bet in this situation. Uh, he has a short stack, so if I throw out a half pot bet here, I can get all in by the river, and he folds it. So we take it down. Here we have pocket aces. Definitely, of course, going to three bet this up to nine big blinds. Our opponent calls us. Um, and we check, uh, he checks, and we bet half pot, and our opponent raises us. So I thought this was an interesting situation, um, but I'm really not too worried here, uh, so I decided to call. The reason why I'm not worried is because I do have the ace hearts here, so it's it's less likely that he has a flush here, because um, he would have more uh, suited aces combos that um, that he would be calling with here, so a lot less, you know, uh, when he would call, be calling the three bet. Plus, you know, there is a seven out here too, a nine out here. So, you know, he wouldn't have like eight, nine, uh, seven, eight uh, of hearts as well, since those are accounted for here on the board. So, it's very unlikely he has a flush. I have no problem calling this bet. Now, when a six comes out, he decides to lead into me here, of course, after raising, which is perfectly normal. Um, you know, now, could he have a straight? Um, he would have to have for straight 10 8. So that's that's pretty unlikely. We really don't think he has a flush here. Um, so uh, I have no problem calling my aces here. Um, just because of the fact that, again, we have the ace of hearts. So we're blocking out you know any potential bluffs, any potential flush he has. Flushes he has. 
The only sense of flush he could possibly have is, you know, maybe he has king queen suited, king ten suited, jack ten suited, which we'll lose to. But um, I think overall, you know, um, it, this would definitely be the right call here. And I do call him. And even if now he did have a flush, we don't, we obviously didn't have to worry about it because now we have uh, enough flush. Uh, but as you can see, he was doing this with a uh, with a gut shot. So here we have pocket kings here from the cutoff. Definitely gonna three bet it here. Get a call with the over pair. Definitely want to throw out a half pot c bet and three bet pot. Our opponent calls us. He checks us again. Definitely want to throw out a, another bet. This time I'm betting a little bit bigger. 26 big blinds at the 35. I think that's fine. Maybe I could even make it even bigger than this. He calls it. And this time now he just completely leads into us here. And I actually decide to fold this hand here. And the reason why I folded it is because thinking about what he could be calling, right? So he check. He check calls here. So. Could he be checking, check along with a flush draw of diamonds? Yeah, it's possible. Um, also could be, you know, this was a three bet pot. So also could be, you know, maybe he had pocket eights and he calls and he calls the three bet. Um, and he has a set of eights. That's possible too. Same thing with tens. You could have a set of tens. Could have a set of twos even. So there's plenty of other hands. You know, sets you could have and and the flush draw. Probably not too many two pair hands. Um, four and then when the four comes out here again, check bet. Check bet even more likely seems. You know, uh, I mean check call that maybe he has a set more likely than a flush. I mean, he could always have the nut flush here. Um, it's always possible, nut flush draw. Um, that might call here, but it was a pretty big bet I put out there. You think at this point, possibly the nut flush draw is gonna fold this here. He's not a super aggressive player, he is a reg. Um, but then when he donks out here on the river, this is always such an alarming bet. Donk, donk all in. Um, and then when a two comes out as well, if he did have a set of tens or a set of eights, he'd hit a full house. And, you know, this is what he's representing. And at this point, I can't beat what he's representing. I can't even come close to beating what he's representing. And this is why I got to fold his hand. Here we have ace queen offsuit. I raise it up. And three bet comes in. So in position, I'm going to call this here. Opponent then bets, which is fine. Uh, I have an ace, so of course I'm going to call with top pair. Get two pair now. Uh, the board isn't great now with it being a flush board. Uh, but again, he three bet us here, so him having a flush is pretty unlikely. Um, unless he has a straight flush at this point with uh, Jack-10 Jack Ten suited. You know, it's more likely he has a straight than he would have a, a flush. Um, you know, is it possible that a gut shot is C-betting there? Uh yeah, that's got shot up. Definitely could be C betting, uh C betting here. What was his what was his um sizing? His sizing was small too. So he could definitely have a straight here. Um with while we have our two pair. He bets into us half pot. Definitely got a call. We're not gonna fold our two pair at this point. Because we still have an opportunity to win this hand, especially being in position. Unfortunately, a fourth club comes out. This is pretty terrible for us not having a club. He bets on he bets into us now. Um about two thirds, uh, three quarter pot around there, um, and uh, we just have to fold out of this. Of course, without having a club, we're pretty much dead to rights at that point. And it's unfortunate. Here we have pocket jacks, and we're definitely gonna three bet our pocket jacks here. Our opponent four bets us in position. We're gonna call the call the pocket jacks. Really nice flop for us here, getting um, getting a set here. Our opponent bets into us here. Um, I don't really feel like our hand is really super vulnerable that we need to actually um, three bet him here, uh, raise him here. Actually, I guess. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I raised him here for value. So, actually, our hand is vulnerable, even though we have a jack, uh, even though we have a jack, um, even though we have a diamond. Uh, it is kind of vulnerable. And anyway, we want to just start betting now. He he leads into us here. We have a set. We could possibly just get it all in. And that's exactly what happens here is my opponent does shove all in. Definitely going to call it here. And 
And unfortunately, um, we kind of get sucked out on here. Opponent has pocket aces, uh, but he does hit the flush here on the river. So unfortunately, we lose this one. Kind of a kind of a tough blow here, um, losing this. And in fact, what's, what's kind of funny is this is the same exact opponent that I won that previous hand with aces. I ended up hitting uh, the flush, although I was ahead of him all the time. Here, in this case, I was ahead of him, and uh, he sucked out on the river with the uh, with the diamond to get the flush. So unfortunate hand, but you know these things will happen, especially when you're in a super down swing like I am. Uh, here we have Jack Nine suited from the cutoff. I open raise, get a call. Uh, we have top pair. Check comes in, so I'm definitely gonna throw out a C bet here. Opponent calls. King comes out now. Uh, my opponent checks. Uh, now I want to throw out an under bet here. Um, I don't want to check back and possibly get bluffed off on the river. Uh, with second pair, good spot here to under bet. So I bet about 20% pot. Opponent calls. He comes out. He checks. I check back. And we take it down. Ace King offsuit here from the small blinds. We are going to definitely three bet um, three bet him here. He calls. Uh, we miss this board completely. We check. He bets into us here. Uh, really small under bet here. Definitely I'm okay peeling one here with uh, two overs. So I call. Jack comes out. Now we go check. He shoves all in and it's an easy fold for us. King Jack suited. Gonna three bet this here from the button. And our opponent calls us here. Flush draw. Pretty nice for us here. Check. Definitely going to throw out a C-bet here. So I throw out a half-hot C-bet in a three-bet pot. Opponent calls. Uh, now we have uh, a middle pair. So we have an option here to check or to bet. Uh, because we have the flush draw and we have middle pair, I don't see much purpose in betting here. So I decided to just check back. Now four comes out. Opponent checks. Again, I don't really see much point in betting here. Uh, we check back and we take it down. Here, ace king offsuit from the cutoff. We get three bets, so we're going to four bet our ace king. Opponent calls. And again, we have two overs here. Uh, there's no draws or anything like that that we can play around with. Uh, opponent checks. We're just going to check back here. Three comes out, and now once he bets, we fold. We have nothing. Here we have king queen offsuit. Opponent uh, min bets into us. We're definitely going to three bet this here. Uh, pot is not very favorable. I mean, the flop is not very favorable here, so we're just going to check back. Queen comes out, so now we get top pair. Opponent bets into us here. Um, we could three bet, or we could just call. Kong just really seems like the best bet here. Um, our, song, our hand is strong, but it's not super strong. Plus, it's a paired board. Uh, so we don't really want to don't want to raise here. It wouldn't make much sense. So we call. Ten of hearts comes out. Opponent bets again. Um... Don't really see any reason not to call this. I mean, unless on the off chance that he has a five. Um, this was a three bet pot, so I mean, could he have ace five suited? It's pretty unlikely. Um, could he have something like a set? I mean, it's probably unlikely too because he might be open raising a little bit bigger from the small blind in that spot. Um, so I feel pretty good about, um, you know. Plus, I mean, yeah, I just I feel really good about just calling here with the with the queen. Um, to this particular bet size. I don't really think we're beat most of the time here. I think we should be good unless he has ace, ace queen. So I call it. And he shows up with jack king. So uh, king jack suited. So he was just bluffing here. And we take it down. So this is a pretty reckless bluff. I mean, he really, I don't even know what the hell he was bluffing even on the turn. Well, I mean, not, no. Well, I mean, well, let's, let's think about it, right? So actually, he's doing a pro bet. Right, so how often does he pro bet here? Let's see. Uh, we don't really have enough hands on him. He's so he was a recreational player, but okay, we can say okay, he pro bet and then he fall through, fine. So actually, it's not a bad play by him at all. I, I would have made the same exact play. Okay, um, here we have six five suited from a small blind. Uh, I mean, from the big blind, and I call. Good bottom pair. Our opponent decides to bet into us here. Um, but I'm definitely going to call it. 
hit two pair now, so our hand's better, but it is there is a flush out there as well. And of course, we know we don't have any hearts having uh, having spades here. Our opponent bets again. Um, I decided actually to call with the two pair. I decided not to fold this up yet. But now the king comes out and a heart comes out. We've lost our two pair. He checks to me here. I'm not going to bluff him. I'm just going to check it back and hope that maybe, I don't know, he was betting with nonsense. Um, unfortunately, he did have a queen. He did have a flush. So a king, he did have a flush. So he was trying to induce me to bluff, but I definitely was not going to be bluffing in this spot. Uh, here we have pocket sixes from the big blind. We're just going to call it. I uh, hit a set, which is really nice. Uh, small blind checks. I decided to check here. Normally I would actually bet here, but I decided this time I just want to actually check it off to the uh, preflop raiser. He does see bet 62% of the time. Um, so let him see bet this here and then I can raise it. And he does see bet it, so he does exactly what I wanted him to. And even better, we get a call here from the small blind player. So I decide to, of course, raise it up here, and we get a call on a fold. Seven comes out, so, I mean, this does, you know, uh, this doesn't really do too much unless, you know, he has 5-4, which is probably unlikely. Um, of course, I'm as a raiser, I'm definitely going to bet here. I'm trying to figure out a way to get as much in the middle as I possibly can. I probably could have bet even bigger here. Uh, maybe this bet is even small. Maybe I should even be betting closer to the pot here and on this uh and he, you know, in this situation, it is still kind of a draw reward here. There are straight draws out there. Um, you know, ten nine is also something else I could just, you know, that he could have a straight here as well. So let's not let's not say ten nine is not out of the question. In fact, ten nine is more likely. Um, he just calls though, which is fine. Um, now at this point here, we got the full house. We're in great shape. Um, I decide to shove all in, which I think is fine here because you know shoving all in is a pot size bet here. Um, so we do actually put us in a situation where we can get it all in by the river. Unfortunately, my opponent folds, so he obviously couldn't even beat a flush, we would think. Here we have 10-9 suited. Raise it up from the cutoff, and we get a 3-bet, and we're definitely going to call the 3-bet here. And we follow a straight. Pretty nice, pretty nice spot for us here. Pretty happy about it. Opponent checks. We just bet half pot here, being a 3-bet pot. And our opponent calls it. Uh, not the best turn for us here with a with a heart. Uh, opponent checks. Definitely want to bet again. Oh, I bet pretty big here. I bet pretty close to pot. Thirty one percent. Thirty two big blinds here. Um, and our opponent folds. Here we have pocket kings from the big blind. Uh, we got a really small three bet here. I of course am going to four bet it. And this guy here raises us all in. So he was a short stack. So interesting he would three bet even with a short stack and not just shove all in. So he shoves us all in, of course. We call it. And uh, he had ace 10, so not much we could do there. Here we have ace 10 suited from the cutoff. Get a three bet. You notice a lot of these are three bets, three bet pots, by the way. Tons of three bet pots tonight. Um, we just call it in position. Not flush draw, pretty nice spot for us here. Uh, definitely want to throw out a bet here, especially when he declines to actually bet. He calls it. And now at this point, we're just going to check back with the flush draw. Uh, also do have an open ender, by the way. Uh, three comes out here, and he checks. And I had an option to bluff here. I actually decided not to bluff in this spot, um, just because it's more likely here when I... Um, on the flop, when I bet on the flop, that's more likely that I have a flush draw. Sure, I could have a backdoor flush draw too, that maybe makes it here. Um, but you know, I don't have any diamonds. Obviously, he could have a diamond and you know, bluff catch me possibly. So I decide actually just to check back here and see. Man, I, can, I still have do still do have some showdown value with an ace. Could always win with with ace high here. So I decide to check back and unfortunately he had ace queen. Uh, it is possible here, you know, this guy's a reg that he would actually call my bet. Um, and because he has the ace of diamonds, if he's sticking on that kind of level. Um, so I am still okay to the fact that I check back here. Even though I, you know, there's a possibility I could have gotten the fold. Just, you know, I'm not sure if I could have pulled that off with a, you know, in this particular hand. Uh, here we have king-queen offsuit from the button. 
Raise it up. Get three bet and definitely get a call. Middle pair. Uh, he bets into us here. Uh, a little under half pot. Definitely going to call here with the queen. Eight comes out. And he bets again. So my read on this particular player is the fact that um, he really wasn't triple barreling that much um, when he's out of position. So for that reason here with the smallish bet, I definitely do want to call. And, you know, if he if he does triple barrel, like he easily fold us here. And But again, he's really not triple barreling too much out of position based on his stats. Um, here he does bet, though, shove all in. So it becomes an easy fold. Ace King. Gonna definitely three bet here when we get a call. Uh pretty good flop here. Top pair, top kicker. Um I decide not to uh not to see bet here because I really don't feel like my hand is that vulnerable. Sure there are the diamonds out there, but you know, I'm not gonna worry too much about that in the three bet pot. Um I'd rather go to the check call line here, uh since my hand really isn't vulnerable, especially since I have an ace as well. My opponent uh my opponent checks back. So now ten comes out. Not the best card for me, of course, because if he has ace jack, he hit a he hit a straight. Then again, he probably is gonna bet uh bet a gut shot there, so it's probably unlikely he even has a hand like ace jack. Um definitely now at this point though, I do want for out of bet. I throw a half pot uh delayed C bet here. My opponent does call it. Uh four spades comes out now, so I think the best bet here is just for me to throw out another half pot bet. I could under bet it too, but I wanted to at least bet a half pot um with top pair, top kicker. And my opponent calls it, and it ends up being a chop. King Queen suited. We raise it up. As you can might expect, there's a three bet. Tons of three bet pots here. Luckily, that's my study. So that's my study focus for weakest three bet pots, and I feel like I played them all pretty well tonight. Uh, here we get the flush draw. Definitely want to throw out a C bet of half pot, and we take it down. And here's the last hand of the night, King King from the button. Uh, so we have an open raise. We have a three bet here, so I'm definitely going to four bet with my kings. And the uh, three better calls me. And now here in this spot, he checks to me. It's a it's it's a little bit less than a two SBR pot. Our opponent has 68.12 big blinds. There's 42 big blinds in the middle. So I decide just to shove here, which is really the correct play um, when the SPR is so low. And my opponent falls and we take it down. So, you know, I, I really feel like I played a really good session tonight. Um, but yet I still ended up down $41. So um, I think we just ran into a little bit of bad luck. Um, actually, when I look at my... Um, if you take a look at it, actually, tonight, um, my CO when adjusted was plus 1401. So... I actually did play well tonight. Just ran into some bad variants this evening, and unfortunately, these are things that I've just been you know been struggling with all all month. And you know, we're at the point now with the bankroll that it's getting to the point where things are getting a little bit scary. As you can tell, we're down to four hundred and sixty-seven dollars. I have nineteen buy-ins here for NL twenty-five. I would be dropping down to NL ten at three seventy-five. This could happen, but it hasn't happened yet. So until it does. You know, it hasn't. So then the question just becomes now I have seventy thousand ACR. Do I just move my entire bankroll over to ignition of four sixty seven? I feel like that might be the right the best thing to do. The ignition being the softest site of the sites I can track. So I think that's what I should do. If you watch this video and you think differently, let me know. Uh, but right now, I'm going to go to bed because it's really late, 12.10. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you like so, do me a favor, please subscribe. Also, if you would like to see uh, the replay of this, I played it on Twitch. Uh, so you can search me on Twitch, uh, LDMarioDL28. I will also put the link to the uh, Twitch channel in the description below. Uh, would love it if you checked out my Twitch channel. And uh, if you can see the live sessions there, I will be streaming most of my sessions live on Twitch. So appreciate you guys coming along and checking that out. And uh, if you like what you saw here, do me a favor, please subscribe, click the like button. And until next time, Poker Dad, out.